tremendous noise in the arena here in Liverpool as Fisher lands a right hand right at the beginning, almost with the sound of the bell still in the air here. And then a left hook on the back of a second right hand. Brilliant start by Fisher. Yeah, straight out of the blocks, Johnny Fisher. Seen Damiani in the past. Doesn't like when opponents come forward. He likes to be on the front foot. You see him trying to creep forward. But I'm telling you now, Johnny Fisher's going to have none of it. He leans back under attack. Damiani, so it's important that Johnny Fisher brings those feet in as he does there. Quick on the feet. Out of range of Damiani. Lovely short white uppercut, though, from the Romford ball. And after watching Peter McGrail in action and all that studied amateur career now, Fisher gets on the front foot with his limited experience before turning pro. A lot of his learning has been done in sparring with the likes of Tyson Fury and Joe Joyce and Derek Chisora as he steps on the front foot once again and traps Damiani in Fisher's own corner. Instead of chopping down with that right hand, Fisher's look for the right uppercut every time he goes to make an attack. Fisher, Damiani puts his head down, so he's wide open for these uppercuts. The guard is wide as well. Big right hand from Fisher landed high on the head in that exchange in the corner, and the nose of Damiani already becoming reddened. And we're not yet in the final minute of the opening round. See Johnny Fisher trying to draw out the lead. We see him more fault in the work from the Romford man. Just pouring that left hand out, trying to, like I say, draw the lead out of Damiani so he can fire back with the right hand over the top or underneath. Damiani not taking the bait. Just trying to look for a big right hand over the top. Leaning back in the corner, doesn't want to do that. Johnny Fisher just smothering his work. And at times, just telegraphing as well, Damiani was able to lean back from one of those big right hands. Fisher needing to set it up behind the left hand. Lovely jab, sharp, accurate, hurtful jab, that. Oh, just missing with the right hand over the top, he lands that one, no big shot from Johnny Fisher. Getting wild with the right hand as Damiani tried to counter in that exchange in the corner. Training. Very good. And that jab is absolutely wonderful. Use it more. Enjoy using it more. All right? Good, good. Very nice. Sit down, relax. Chill, son. All right? Very, very nice. Yeah, big hurtful right hands from Fisher. He did telegraph a couple of them, though, and it made Damiani read them, glancing at that one, but there was a hurtful right hand in there. Real force and spite in those shots from this man. So Mark Tibbs in the corner asking for more work behind the left-hand jab from Johnny Fisher as we head into the second round. This schedule for eight, the first scheduled eight-rounder of the professional career of the Ron football. Yeah, good advice from Mark Tibbs as Johnny Fisher gets back down to work, letting his hands go. Damiani really, talk about Johnny Fisher telegraphing the right hand, that's exactly what Damiani's doing there. Looking down at the floor, taking the hooks on the, the guard. The Italian waiting to spring a surprise in that corner. He attempted it a couple of times in the opening round, as again, Fisher's a bit too keen with the right hand and was slightly awry in terms of accuracy. Like I said in that first round as well, I'd like to see him change the angle of the right hand, come underneath the guard, 
with the uppercut. Like I say, if you look at Damiani's guard there, it's wide open. He puts his head down, so he is open to the uppercut. But that is his money shot, Johnny Fisher, the right hand over the top. Fisher just taking clipping shots, nothing helpful on the way in, but enough to make him show some respect in terms of opening up behind that jab and creating the openings for the follow-up right hand, which he's missed with a number of times and does so again there at the halfway stage of the second. Look, he's got eight rounds here, so not everything has to, has to be a dramatic first round knockout. Getting a ribbon behind the jab, like you say, Mike, and as Mike Tibbs has been calling for, nice jab, you see, it's a nice, sharp, crisp jab, and he lets it go, that was a nice left to the body, and a left hook to the head, nice work, but more variation with the jab and more work behind that jab, as you see, there's a beautiful shot, and let me tell you now, they're hurtful shots, they're not just range finders. In these eight-round contests and beyond that, they do take their toll as he gets back to work, Johnny Fisher. The left hand to the body earlier, Darren, as you were calling for with the right hand previously, and that created the opening for a terrific left hook to the chin as well, which it has to be said, Damiani took well. Just see Johnny Fisher there, he took a step back to see if he could draw Damiani to come forward. But the Italian was having none of it. So I think we're going to see the, the remainder of this contest. Johnny Fisher forcing Damiani back. All fault in the work required, but looking dangerous, looking strong, Johnny Fisher. Very good job, relax, suck out, well done. So Johnny Fisher, according to Mark Tibbs, guilty of smothering his work at times and asking him to get behind that left-hand lead, which is so impressive when he throws it as sharply as that. It's better when he closes the gap, Johnny Fisher, he just missed with the right hand, throwing a one-two. But ref advise stepping in with a double jab, then throwing the right hand, but again, making life very difficult for Damiano. He's on him, he's close, he's physically so strong, Johnny Fisher. And that drains you down the stretch when you've got someone in front of you constantly making you think, making you worried about the shots they're going to throw. It could be a case of Johnny Fisher softening up Damiani. Trying to get the stoppers later on. Damiani limited in terms of attacking ability, but he's shown in the past that he does know how to look after himself. He's been beaten twice, but one of those was inside the distance, the other on points. And as far as tonight's distance is concerned, he's been the full eight rounds once and won that one on points. As now Fisher starts to open up, a bull army get behind him in the Italian's corner. Again, just, he did throw an uppercut in there and Damiani credit to him, he closed the guard up slightly there and it was a bit of a glancing blow as well, but definitely the shot for Johnny Fisher to throw when he backs Damiani into those corners because you can see time and time again, just take a look at Damiani when he does let his hands go, the guard is wide, the head comes low and that's when you start firing in the uppercuts. But looking good, Johnny Fisher moving the head side to side, Faints. 
Gum shield. This has come out. to go in the third round and this already turning into a valuable exercise for Johnny Fisher as he lands a terrific right hand. Now's his chance to follow up sustained attacks that Darren has been talking about throughout the evening. Having yeah. seen wins for Rhiannon Dixon and for Peter McGrail. Yeah, good punch resistance there from Damiani and again with that jab because it was a nice right hand there caught the Italian right on the temple and they usually really scramble your senses but didn't look unfazed at all. Took the shot well. Do you feel he's learned a lot, Johnny Fisher? Still a work in progress and we can't get carried away, but if you go back to that Ingrama fight, uh, Ali Pallia, you know, a couple of fights ago, it was a different fight already. Yeah, the Spanish heavyweight champion, Gabriel Ingrama, around this time last year, the only man to take Johnny Fisher the distance so far. That was over six rounds coming here towards the end of the third. Nice long left hook from Johnny Fisher. Didn't opt to step in with the right hand then. Lovely. Well-timed shot. You see the, the right hand of Damiani stand exactly where it was. Top of the bill here this evening, this man, Diego Pacheco from Los Angeles and now based in the Benavides camp in Seattle in Washington, making his first appearance here in the United Kingdom and described by Eddie Hearn as one of the most exciting prospects anywhere in the world in any division. next week, Cyrus Pattinson against the former British welterweight champion Chris Jenkins. Here we move into round four. Johnny Fisher against the Italian Alfonso Damiani. Fisher into the fourth round for only the second time in his professional career and takes a clipping left hand from Damiani at the end of the latest exchange. Yeah, credit to the Italian. He's trying to pot shot on the back foot. There's no power in these shots at all, but he's trying to soften Johnny Fisher up and then try and wing in a big overhand right. Just a little bit too predictable with the shot. No real fault in what he's doing, but in game, takes a nice left of the body, but fires back with a nice jab of his own. Johnny Fisher a bit wild with that right hand again. And again on the back foot, Damiani has got enough now to see that shot coming. Not really overly ambitious in terms of a counter. Yeah, he has a neck, Mike, doesn't he? have just been able to take the sting out of the shot. The gum shield's come out again of Damiani. In those instants, Mike, when you're, you're kind of glancing the shots on the target, that's when you bring your feet in, get closer to your opponent. So, obviously, Johnny, just creep in a little bit more, get behind the double jab, then throw the right hand. We talked at the beginning of the round about the bill coming up next week on the zone in Newcastle, full of terrific prospects and also a fight for the English heavyweight title, such a strong domestic scene, all the way down from Tyson Fury, the WBC champion, as Fisher now starts to land more cleanly than at any stage. And next week, Solomon Dakers against Robert Ismay for the English title, that's in Newcastle here on the zone, as Fisher goes on the front foot, weaving, trying to create openings now as Damiani is back topped on to the ropes once again. That's a huge right hand, Mike, that he caught Damiani with. He kind of swayed back on the ropes, but nonetheless he got caught clean. That's another huge right hand by Johnny Fisher, and the referee waves it off. Terrific three-punch combination. He started with a body shot. Wonderful variety from Johnny Fisher. In the end, producing a terrific stoppage in the fourth round. Just when Damiani threatened to take the contest all the way, and he's still complaining to the referee, Steve Gray, but Gray had seen enough. He'd seen very little in the way of ambition from the Italian. 
And so a wonderful attack, nicely put together from this man who is, by his own admission, still very much a novice with very little in the way of an amateur career behind him. And he makes it eight in a row with a very impressive finish. Yeah, uh, look, I can understand Damiani's protest there. But he was caught, he was hurt, and at no point did he really look like he had much chance of winning the contest. Nonetheless, maybe he should be given the opportunity, but it's the heavyweight boxing you're talking about, and you can get really hurt, and you can see Damiani taking the sting out of the shots, leaning back, so when he's got him backed into his neutral corner, just misses with the, the left hook, with that right hand over the top, and credit to the Italian, he never went down at any stage, and... I mean, Johnny Fisher really does punch hard. He packs a punch and he took that one. He never went down. I can understand the protest. When you take a huge shot like that and you don't go down and you're, you're still in the fight, it'd like to continue, but the referee's job is to protect the fighter. And like I say, Damiani never really looked like he had much to offer as far as offense and in attack. So. The rock football journey continues, certainly improvements there. The show goes on. And PFL Europe begins in style in Newcastle as the inaugural MMA season opens on March the 25th, two weeks time. Check your local schedules for availability. Up next here in Liverpool, Robbie Davis Jr. on a pivotal night in his career. The 11th of March on home soil. This one's just felt perfect for me. Davis Jr. I'm always looking for the better opportunities, so sometimes you've got to wait for them. And this time it was kind of a step towards world dollars. And what is he flying, ready to go? Robbie Davis Jr., a former British Commonwealth and European champion, has always been a live dog and shown plenty at British and European level. And that is a statement victory for Robbie Davis Jr. I'm hoping to just push on for the world title now. But there is a sense with him that he could show the best version of himself yet. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Steve Gray calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, two minutes and five seconds of round number four. Your winner by TKO. He's still undefeated and the army rolls on La Boss. Jenny, the Rockford Bull Fisher.